is Thomas with LibertarianProgressive.com, BlogTalkRadio.com forward slash election channel. And today we have an interview with John McCarthy, who's an independent candidate for the U.S. House of Representatives in District Number 2 in Oklahoma. And um, so we look forward to this interview with John. And what we do is interview independent third-party candidates who are going to be on the ballots this November 8th. Remember, that's Election Day. And uh, and for Congress, that comes once every two years. And, um, and that's very important. And John has a unique campaign. He's um, running for Congress on a platform. Well, here, let me just let him explain it. John, welcome to... Uh, blogtalkradio.com forward slash election channel. How are you today, sir? Good, Thomas. How are you? Doing great. Great. And um, and so there's a couple reasons I like your campaign. One is because you're an independent, and that's what we interview as independent third-party candidates. Two is that you're the only independent or third-party candidate in your specific district. And actually, three, um, you do have a specific platform that... Uh, you know, needs more attention and um, needs a solution. And can you um, can you expand on that, sir? Sure. That in your sure. own words. Yeah. Sure, sure. Well, obviously, you know, we've had cancer here for the last seventy-five years. Um, and, and you're not talking about the corrupt politics, corrupt politics in our politics. You're talking about actual cancer, right? <laughs> yes, I'm talking about the health issue of cancer. And uh, we, we, you know, we've had this for about seventy-five years now. Um, uh, and there really has not been it's it's been basically the same old approach um i can tell you that uh cancer right now it's about 125 billion dollar a year industry um for about the last 75 years it's been the same old approach which is what i call the cut poison and burn approach and that may not sound too great but that's essentially what it is you know they're they're going to come in there they're going to take the you know they're going to cut the tumor out of you and then they're going to uh Put uh, you know, you, you know, administer chemotherapy and, and radiation, and then at that point, you know, they're going to tell you you probably got about five years to live, and that's you know, it's been the same old song and dance up there for about you know the last, well, for about the last seventy-five years, and, and I think this approach is outdated. Um, you know, I, I, chemotherapy that was an approach that was basically developed, oh, you know, after World War Two, you know, through the use. Of they they combat it through the use of mustard gas, and um, so and ever since then you know they, they've used that and, and with radiation, you know it's basically an approach that uh, puts you know high voltages of electricity to your body. Um, you know when you go in there with a, uh, you know you go to see a you know like your local hospital or whatever and you might get an X-ray, that's going to probably put about a um, hundred thousand volts of electricity to your body and um you know of course when you do um when you when you go in for a typical radiation treatment you know that's there it's probably about like about 6 million volts of electricity to your body and uh i guess the good news now is that they you know they they finally um god bless the, the researchers because there's some good people out there that are looking to you know rid the world of this disease that we know is cancer and um you know so so i think that you know I, I think number one you know i think obviously everybody and which the federal government really doesn't do well we have to start focusing on our health and putting more issues on staying healthy you know throughout our life and uh of course you know you hear some things up in washington and you say oh they're going to do this or do that well those programs have basically been unsuccessful and it all it all really kind of has to start you know, in the local community level and trying to get people involved with it. So, um, you know, I, I think that the number one, you know, we have to realize that, that cancer, you know, it, it's a disease that, uh, you know, has been around for a long time and it, it affects people, you know, of all ages. You know, there's probably about, oh, I would say about 10,000 cases of, a, you know, childhood cancer every year. And uh, some of those stories, you know, really are heartbreaking um you know there there's a you know some people might want to go on google and, and google live like bella you know a, a four-year-old girl you know whose life is taken because of this who is 
you know, administered chemotherapy and radiation. And uh, and it's not, you know, I, I mean, maybe 50 or 75 years ago, that was an approach that, that you know, could have worked. But um, right now it's not really doing, you know, what it needs to do. So it, it's uh, it's bad. Um, you know, I, I think, I also think that we have to kind of look at, um you know what kind of vitamins are we taking? You know we we hear all this stuff about EpiPen and you know the FDA and uh, you know prescription pills and things like that, but we really need to you know I, I really think that that the whole medicine industry needs to be revolutionized and we need you know we need to bring modern medicine into this you know into the year 2016 as well. Ren, I think I think we're living in basically back in the 50s with a lot of this, you know, we've done some good things with with the heart and, uh, you know, a lot of things like that. But as far as, as cancer and, uh, you know, with things like that, we, we have not had much medical advance at all. So, you know, I think that, and I, th- I also think that, you know, we need to, you know, especially modern medicine, you know, we, we go in there to our doctor and they don't ever, you know, well, I guess they do test your vitamin levels. That's not true. But, you know, they, there needs to be more focus on, on our vitamin levels and, and to make sure that we're getting, you know, some things like that because I think a lot of that is, you know, it's preventative medicine and things. You know, like, you know, when, when we get older, our body, you know, I think the first thing, especially when somebody in their 40s or 50s who's probably, you know, we're all prone to getting cancer because at some point in our lives, you know, the chances of us getting cancer are pretty good. And so, you know, that that's the first point that everybody needs to recognize. You might be in your 20s, you might be in your 30s, you might be in your 40s, you know, and you say, well, this doesn't affect me, I'm not worried about it. Well, at some point, if you live long enough, you know, and the older you get, the more chance, you know, the, the, the higher probability of you getting cancer, you know. So the, you have to look you have to look at the whole <clears throat> picture. And <clears throat> I, I think that most people that are in, in, um, you know that they that go to these things that you know that does cancer you know has to kind of realize that they have a good chance of getting cancer but when we get older we tend to get less sun so you know we need to take a vitamin D3 supplement that's the first thing you need to do is check your vitamin D3 level and um you know and I, I and then the second question you know that we all should ask ourselves especially as we get older you know, and it's a, it is you know, is our body going to be alkaline or acidic? You know, an alkaline body, you know, that that more or less incorporates fruits and vegetables into your diet. Um, many people uh, of your listeners probably have not taken your pH level or anything like that. Uh, your pH level is basically you know, you, you get a strip and you stick it underneath your tongue, and uh, it's a scale of like I think six. Three to ten, and you know the, and the, you know the higher it is, the more alkaline your body is. That the, it indicates kind of, and it's kind of a greenish color. So the more greenish color, the, the more alkaline your body is, and what that basically says is that you're, you know, you're you're basically at less of a risk to uh, getting cancer. Now, you know, there on the other side, you know, of course, if you have sugar, you know, if you're drinking cokes which are full of sugar, processed sugar, or you're having or or high carb substances, you know, then you're you also have a higher chance of uh, of getting cancer because your your body is more acidic. So, you know, I think that's something that, and that's something at my age, I'm 47. That I, you know, I, and I've recently kind of incorporated in my diet because I, you know, my both of my parents passed away with cancer, so I, I, I and they both passed away, and both of their cancer curiously and they started out in their breast. So, you know, you, I think, you know, if you're at a high risk for cancer and you're especially in your 40s or whatever, you know, that's something that that you really kind of need to look at. You need to, have, you need, you you got to really check your diet. You've got to check your vitamin D3 level. And you, you know you need to take and you need to make sure you're a good quality vitamin supplement as well, not just something you know I'm not going to name any names, but not just something at your local drugstore or something like that, because a lot of those things aren't worth the paper it's written. Yeah, something on. with like 50 vitamins and all the micronutrients, not something with just like the 10 most popular vitamins. Uh, John, now I have a couple of uh, follow-up questions for you here, and. Um, 
Now, we people can find out more information at McCarthy 4, F-O-R, Congress, 2nd, 2nd, district.com. And um, now, let's, you know, I want to ask you some questions about prevention, some questions about the cure. I mean, what seems common sense about sugar and carbohydrates, that's something recently, or actually a long time ago, I decided to quit drinking sodas completely and haven't had hardly any since then. And um, and carbohydrates is sugar. Like, people don't know if you have pasta, you have a lot of, like, these uh, refined breads. They, they they don't look like sugar, but your body turns them into sugar later, so you might as well just be eating stuff that's going to magically turn into sugar late, later. So as many carbohydrates, as much sugar as you can, especially sodas and stuff like that, you can get out of your diet, the better off you're going to be. I mean, two major strategies is one, don't give your body anything that cancer likes, and two, give your body stuff that cancer hates, and that would be, you know, a lot of uh, fruits and vegetables, and I just have to recommend one thing. There's this guy, he's been on, like, Ricky Lake, lots of shows. He has a YouTube channel. It's called Chris Beat Cancer. He has a blog, and he has a lot of good resources. It's Chris Beat Cancer, and um, and so check him out, but so <clears throat> prevention and there's been lots of technologies where they can kind of zone in on certain kinds of cancers and stuff like that. And, and what do you think about, um, you know, like the FDA? What about people um, who already have cancer and or have been diagnosed with it? And supposedly we all have it dormant in us, but um, just something, you know, makes it expand. What about, um, like, FDA approvals, people that want to take uh, – you know, experimental technologies, um, do they have that right? And uh, should some of those new things be fast-tracked? What's holding it up? So let's talk about the experimental stage and people's rights about what they should be able to do. Um, and uh, what, what do you think about things like that? We'll start out with that. Well, I, my, my initial thoughts on it, you know, I, I think – on, on something like this, or of course, if if I'm elected to office and if I'm up there, I'm going to get, you know, micromanage this process as far as you know, as far as you know, talking to these biotech companies, finding out what works, what doesn't work, and you know, if the FDA isn't you know moving things, you know, the way that I want them to, I'm going to question them as to why 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 is why what's the hold up here? Why aren't we getting this done? You know, and things like that. Uh, you know, and I, I think that you know, it's not necessary. I think that there's some good small biotech companies. I think that they, I think that these biotech companies, you know, this, maybe the ones that aren't on the the market right now that are trying to come up. I think that I think there's a lot of good companies like that that are trying to come up. And I I would like to you know, of course. I would like to, you know, have like three or five companies up there like that, you know, these small ones. I don't want the big ones that are already up there. I want I want them on a smaller level, and I, you know, and of course, you know, there's 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 academic research institutions that do too, like Stanford and, and Cold Harbor, Harbor Springs and things like that, and of course, to get you know maybe get them involved in the process. But you know, what what you do is you vet these people real good. You find out what's working and what's not working, and and of course you know, and you you hold the funding, you know, on what you know, like it, you know, it's at the beginning of the stage, okay, you know, if if you want to continue funding, you're going to have to show some positive results, or you're not going to get funding. And I think that you know, I I I don't know, I don't know too much about the National Institute of Health, but I I want to, I on something like this, I want you know, more direct access to find out what, you know, what is going on, what's not going on, what's working, and what's not working. And so, you know, I, I don't want the National Institute of Health coming up to me and saying, hey, you know, these companies right here are, are good or what have you, because, you know, obviously up in Washington, D.C., you're dealing with some very big, powerful influence. And I, I mean, the the type of influence that is up in Washington D.C. is overwhelming. I mean, you know, that let's just face it. I mean, sometimes there's I, I'm not going to name any names, but they, there's some lobbyists and some things up there like that that they can just make one phone call and pretty much get what they want. So I, I, I but I, that's why I want the smaller companies out there 
that you know are looking that are looking to get this done. I, I want to reward them, but I want results. And you know, and when we're talking about 125 billion dollars a year, well, you know, if, if we could cut that down, you know, and, and find something that that, that a cure, that we're, you know, and a lot of this money is basically going to these chemo drugs and these radiation and chemotherapy and get that out of the process. And I would I'd be willing to wager that Medicare is probably covering a good portion of that. So, you know, we but we have to really, you know, this this is something, you know, I, I, I'm a little frustrated with Congress. Well, I'm, I'm completely frustrated with Congress. That's why I'm, I'm running. But, uh, you know, I think I, I think there's too much photo ops. I don't think they're not – I don't really think a lot of them are really looking into issues that they need to look into. I don't think either side is really doing what they need to do to, you know, to get our budget in order and uh, – but, it, but but with the FDA, you know, we're seeing a lot of different things that are going on right now that that really aren't even, you know, making much sense. We're not, we you know, we, you know, they're doing some things under Obama's administration that that are, are taking away, you know, generic drugs and things like that. You know, they're they're trying to limit the the people up there. Now, why they're doing it, I don't know. But, but you know, it seems like special. In, I mean, do you think like maybe this sounds conspiratorial or maybe? It's just a fact, but do you think there's um, – so when you talk about this issue, actually, it expands into other issues. It expands into, um, you know, money. It expands into influence and special interests. expands into efficiency. expands into health. And so just with this one topic, we're not just talking about cancer. I mean, you've already expanded it into several other issues, and um, – yeah, we have been doing the same thing for like the last 70 years or so, like you say. I, I mean, um, you know, do you think that there is maybe not intentionally, but just a status quo that self-perpetuates and, uh, you know, there'd be a lot of people put out of business if cancer was cured um, in the next, let's say, 10 years or whatever. I mean, what if we put a Manhattan Project type focus onto it? I mean, would, you, you know, I, I would think there'd be a lot more things that are unseen now that would you know grow out of you know curing cancer but uh do you think that there's actually interests that just like it the way it is well see that that's going to be one of the bigger questions that going forward because you know we there right now you know we there's a process that you know I, there's one product you know there's 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 some drugs and there's a process you know they're basically what what it is with with one cancer treatment is, that's in process that's showing pretty good results is is you know we, we have what they call T cells you know they're they're extracting their T cells from your body from by blood you know and then they're readministering these T cells into um you know into genetically engineered T cells they're 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 genetically engineering it and then they're put they're they're putting it back through in I, by, by IV back into where the tumor affected area is and that that is that's one thing that has shown positive results, and of course you know there's one drug on the market right now, and it's called Opdiva O P D I V A that I'm aware of, and of course you know where I live I don't think that there's much you know they have cancer treatments around here but I don't think that that's much around I know I know M D Anderson does it I think there's a Memorial Sloan Kettering that does it, and um, but you know. And that, and that's the that's the question too because I, I you know I I listened to an interview on Saturday, with you know they they had some people that you know had gone through these cancer immunotherapies, and uh, you know that that had, have had you know good positive results. Of course, not all of them do, does. There's there's been some people that have had some bad reactions. Some people have had actually died from in some of these clinical trials. But you know that that's why whoever's going through this, they have to, they have to know their body, they have to research things, and you know they they have to decide what is best for them because there there's risk. But the other side of it is, you know, if you're in a terminal condition, I don't really see too much of what you have to lose. I know I would I would I would rather do immunotherapy than go through the chemotherapy and the radiation. And, and all those people that had gone through the immunotherapy on stage, you know, basically reasserted that that thing. But, of course, you know, the, the, there's a debate up there in the medical field right now that, oh, well, d do we want to try to, you know, put chemotherapy 
in and you know combine this with immunotherapy well that's going to be one of the one of the bigger challenging questions going forward and my position is no I want to rid the world of immunotherapy. I mean, chemotherapy and radiation. I want to get rid of it. And let's, you know, wouldn't it be nice if you just went to your local doctor and they just extracted some blood from you, and then you know they 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 would re-engineer those T cells like that, and you could have that that, that those cells re-administered into your body, and you could basically, you know, go, you know, maybe some medicine after that or whatever. You know, instead of having this chemo, because you know the the thing about chemotherapy, obviously, is people lose their hair, their immune system's destroyed. I, I mean, the the chemotherapy can even be do more damage to you than what. Yeah, it could do more damage. Yeah. And a lot, and, and most people who go through the chemotherapy, of course, they have different you know levels of it, but. Uh, you know, they most people who go through the chemotherapy, you know, usually end up getting cancer again. So I, I mean, my my position on that is that you know is that we need to, you know, it, it, we need to totally as far especially with the cancer industry, we need to totally revolutionize this industry and not and you know and, and focus on immunotherapy and get rid of the the, the chemo and the radiation. That's that's my position. But of course that but that's that, that's the debate that's going to be pivotal as far as moving forward because this immunotherapy is already working in a lot of cases. So, you know, that now there's talk, well, should we try to implement chemotherapy with it and all this? And I say no. <laughs> Well, let me ask you, and let's get into prevention a little bit. Now, just to be clear, on your website, this is your main issue, and it does have a lot of offshoot issues like uh, special interests and and the budget and things like that. But um, just so people know who they're voting for, it says uh, your name's on your website, uh, McCarthy for Congress, second district dot com. Uh, fellow citizens, uh, my name is John McCarthy. I'm running as a independent for the second congressional district of state of Oklahoma. You support basic conservative principles such as lower taxes, limited government, Second Amendment, sanctity of human life. Having said that, you are running a campaign for the cure of cancer. So, um, so that is good. Now, let's. Uh, there's just one other thing. Earlier, I recommended. Um, you know, you can just Google Chris beat cancer. He has a lot of interesting things. Not saying I believe everything that he says, but there's this one other video, John. I want to sh- ask you to, you know, sometime when you have a chance, just look it up on YouTube. It was a TED Talk. Um, it was someone named Lisa Rankin, who's a doctor. She had a show called "Is There Scientific Proof We Can Heal Themselves?" She also had another one about basically the placebo effect, and um, just showing, you know real scientific proof about the placebo effect about people having tumors that were given sugar pills well and sugar is probably not the best thing but but these t- tumors just went away when they believed it and and it's just you know real scientific evidence about the placebo effect our body to possibly cure ourselves so you know what about prevention you're talking about cutting out sugar carbohydrates should there be a lot more focus on prevention as well? And, and that might also go into the environment, I mean, in some ways. Um, so what, what do you say about this, you know, in the scope of prevention for cancer as well? Well, absolutely. Abs- you know, absolutely. I mean, you know, that, that goes to, you know, the quality of life at your workplace, you know. And, and of course, I mean, uh, you know, the, I, I think that these, Food providers and, and you know there there's certain corporations out there that farming corporations that need to you know do things in an ethical manner such as you know glyphosate I don't think that that should be sprayed on our crops and uh, I I don't think you know that that cows should be shot up with steroids and or or hormones or anything like that so you know we have to make sure number one that our local grocery store is, is not going to poison us you know are not going to be having pesticides on our food that you know on our vegetables or crops that we're eating that that's the first thing right there and so that you know that that so i i mean because it, if you know the, the, it all starts with your diet if your diet's all messed up 
you know, then everything else is messed up. And then after your diet, it, you know, it starts with exercise and things like that. And that and that's where our local community has to, you know, come in. You know, have good parks to walk in. Have, you know, have some fitness centers and things like that. I, I live out of the lake, and a lot of these areas, you know, they they don't have a lot of you know physical activity. And you know, a lot of people here in my district, you know you know, die at a relatively young age. And a lot of people die, you know, end up dying of cancer. So I obviously, you know, but that's that's the first thing. And that's, uh, you know, that's another thing that the federal government, they're not addressing the issue of glyphosate. Why? I don't know. But I know that there's some awful powerful people that, you know, won't, you know, that, that are kind of, you know, maybe have a, a pretty strong influence up in Washington, D.C., so you know, the, I, I think that that that's another thing that we you know we've got to address up there because it, if our health isn't good, if we're not healthy as a nation, then all this other stuff, these TVs and computers, and I mean, which are all great, but you know, our I mean, but we have to look at our quality of life here too, you know, as far as as our health, and then you know, obviously with Obamacare, whether you disagree with it or you agree with it, you know. These costs are running through our our insurance, and and, and these health problems, you know, are, are you know, putting more costs on our society. And I know that for most people right now, their health insurance is just going through the roof. So you know, one one thing we have to kind of do to help offset that is we've got to become a healthier nation. And uh, so I, I think that you know, like uh, as I've mentioned, you know, I believe that that you know, the proper nutrition, you know, getting the right vitamins. And uh, you know, exercise. You know, and I think I think your local community can play a good part of that. I'm, I, you know, I, and I think I'm not really so prone on the federal government just saying you know this or that or or what have you. But I think that's something that has to kind of be looked at to make sure. You know, I, I think a, a good congressman is going to sit there and, and communicate well. With you know, with uh, there, you know, there's some a lot of cities in my district, and you know, with each city council member to make sure that things are they're doing things in the right way as far as health and nutrition and things like that and you know I, there's a lot of small grocery stores and things like that that you know some carry organic foods and and some don't but i you know i i think that uh you know most of our our vegetables and crops and things like that that we're eating you know should be you know organic and i, I you know I, I mean i know like in the in a larger metropolitan areas you know they you know we they have whole foods and they have some other uh you know good quality health grocery stores that that offer organic foods but in these smaller rural areas kind of like where i'm at you know they they offer a there's some things that are organic but there's not enough and so that's 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 you know that that's an issue as far as i'm concerned is for my district is you know what what kind of food and crops are they or do we have in our grocery store that people are eating? Because you know we, we've got to really pay attention to to people's health. And uh, I, I've I've stated I've I've been asked and I've you know I've gave a response in a local newspaper that I said you know I believe you know that the overall health and well-being of our nation is probably going to be one of the more challenging issues of our time going forward. And I, I still you know I stand by that. I think that you know in particularly with with cost. And things like that, you know. Um, I, yeah. I think. I think. I th- oh, go ahead. I think you know, like, you know, I, I mean, with the with Obamacare here lately, I've seen, you know, it's like when you go to your doctor. Well, you know, you usually had. I used to be able to get in my doctor, like, you know, within a week or whatever. Well, now, you know, if I try to, do, oh, there's to buy a two month waiting list or something like that. I'm like, you know, what's going on here? I don't. I, I just. I don't. I think that there's a lot of things and. Uh, you know, and, and of course, you know, the, even with this colonoscopy stuff, you know, a lot of these doctors and with the, these older people, you know, they're they're recommending colonoscopies, and it's really not necessary, you know. And uh, there's like about seventy thousand cases of somebody getting injured from a colonoscopy, you know, and in some cases resulting from death. I, I have somebody, I have a neighbor that just here recently, you know, had to, you know, had to have an ambulance come pick him up because of the, you know, the side effects of the colonoscopy. So, you know, there, there's a lot of, and there's there's other tests out there that, that, 
you know, there's what they call a CTC uh, scan, which which is less invasive and doesn't, you know, have all, all these other side effects, all, a lot more safer, which is more important. So, you know, but, but the, the, the average thing, when you go to your local doctor, they use the one size at all. Well, go to... Go to a colonoscopy, you know, whether you need it or not. I mean, they're they're recommending that left and right these days. So I would encourage everyone to at least kind of, you know, look at your options on, on something of that nature before you, you know, go through that procedure. Yeah. Now, we have about five minutes, so there's a couple follow-up questions. I think one thing that would be great and make people a lot more sustainable and uh, a lot more um, responsible is I wish everyone would – grow more food and, and have their own garden and maybe, you know, get at least like 25% of what they eat from something that they grow themselves, you know, um, oh, seasonally yeah. or, or whatever. That would be uh, absolutely great. And um, it probably help them with their grocery bills too. And, and in the long term, make them feel good about themselves and, and just on and on. But now let me ask you, John, um, are, are there any debates in your district? Um, do you have any coming up? Uh, and um, and so how is that aspect of the campaign going in this final 40 days or so that we have left to the election day? Uh, there's some forums. Um, basically, you know, the, there's one forum next week in uh, a town called Salisaw, Oklahoma. And in this forum, there's probably going to be, you know, like I think, well, of course, they had the state representatives and things like that out there. And so, you know, I do plan on attending, you know, some of these forums that are that are coming up, uh, you know, here pretty soon. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's that's good. And uh, so, you are the only third party candidate. And again, we've been talking with John McCarthy, an independent for the U.S. House of Representatives, District Number Two in Oklahoma, giving people a choice besides um, Republican or Democrats. And uh, he's the only third party option. He's basically running on a platform against how we've been approaching uh, cancer in society for the last 70 years and wants to bring some new ideas to Congress. Um, so, you know, please take a look at his campaign. John, who are some of your favorite past or present people, elected or, or not, if you don't mind sharing that with us? Well, I can tell you probably my favorite candidate <laughs> And of course, he wasn't elected. Um, you know, and that was Ross Perot. I, I really felt like I, I really was disappointed when he, you know, wasn't able to to become president because I think he, you know, would have been one of the greatest presidents that, that we ever had. And of course, you know, one of his major concerns was, you know, was this growing debt that we have, and um, that he, of course, that didn't. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I think he really would have addressed this issue and got things paid off, and uh, I think we'd have been a lot, you know, better off, you know, with him as president. Uh, you know, one of the things that he, you know, he said was, you know, that every time we pass a law, a certain amount of freedom is taken away from our society. And, uh, you know, I, I find that that's so, so true. And, of course, he was also against NAFTA, which is a big issue, national issue in this campaign you know he he said you know passing you know at that time you know that's when congress was getting ready to, to you know they were debating over nafta and of course the national media and everybody else oh nafta is just going to be wonderful well you know when that hasn't turned out to be so true but he he came in there and he you know he said basically his quote off that he said you're going to hear a giant sucking sound of jobs being shipped out of the u.s economy and uh, of course you know that that's you know, we we've seen that to be true. So I I, I really have liked Ross Perot, um, and uh, I I thought you know contrary to I know I know that there's going to probably be a lot of people that disagree with this statement, but uh, I did I did like George Bush, um, you know, that, because the second one uh, I thought that um, I thought that you know I thought he handled things real well. With 11 I thought he got a bad shake out there with with a lot of things, but I did like him. But uh, you know, I mean, there, there he just had some bad events that happened on his watch, and uh, uh, so I, I liked him. And um, so th those two are kind of the the real favorites. Um, I, I I I'm just I haven't really been too impressed with a lot of these other uh, our government for quite some time, to be honest. It's, Particularly the eight, last eight years, I I just think that the debt that they've run up <clears throat> from ten to almost twenty trillion dollars is just ridiculous. 
and they, they and I don't think they they don't seem to to understand that that they're you know this is serious business, and I I'm also concerned about our Federal Reserve, you know, and that with these negative <coughs> some of these central banks all across the United States or the world that are having negative interest rates, and I don't I don't see the level of concern. On either side, really, I see I, the Republicans kind of sit there and say, oh, "Show some concern," but there's not that sense of urgency that that they've really got to kind of address that. You know, I, we're running a half a trillion dollars of debt a year right now. It's going to be twenty trillion by the time Obama gets out of office. So it's, we've got some. Yeah, we don't problems. want to reach past that event horizon per se, where there's no coming back. And it, it, that is, I'm. Sorry to put a pun here, but kind of like analogous to, you know, a cancer in our society in another way. I mean, we keep wanting the sugar, which is, you know, uh, deficit spending. And, um, and and a little bit of sugar can be good sometimes, but, you know, too much of it, um, and then it controls you. And, of course, Ross Perot was the independent candidate in 1992, who after the first debate was number one in the polls in a three-way race. He dropped out, but he came back in. And um, on Election Day, he got 19%, uh, I, I think one of the highest ever for a third-party candidate since, of course, I think Abraham Lincoln, who won. But, um, John, it has been a pleasure. I hope you have, uh, you know, much success in your campaign and, and, you know, who knows, maybe a victory. And so good luck in that. And um, people, again, can find out more information at uh, McCarthy for Congress, secondDistrict.com. John, it has been a pleasure. Uh, any final words of wisdom before we uh, end the interview right now? Well, I I believe that you know I I think this is a great interview. I think it's a great process. I think it's what you're doing is great because you know I've I've looked at I've I've watched some of your other candidates and I think that people really you know, people really have to start you know I'm not saying to vote for them but I think you I think they ought to start taking a look at these independent candidates. I like that John Sawyer from Florida. And I like yeah. that other guy from Wisconsin. I think they, I like both of those. And I, I think that they had some, you know, that's that's really what we need up there. We don't need people that's got the, oh, the Harvard education and all that. They'll be just fine. We need just good ordinary common folks to kind of get something done up there. Yeah, more regular people. Some of these guys were entrepreneurs. Some of them are veterans. They're definitely qualified. They're only third party. We're not telling people who to vote for. Rather, just promoting that a responsible media will cover these people who have the earned being on the ballot that will cover them equally and let the chips fall where they may, you know? Yes, and, I, um, I, I, yeah. I, 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 and after this, pro, you know, after this process, I, I think, you know, I'm definitely going to start taking a, a look at, well, number one, I'm going to start taking looking. It's kind of awakened me because I'm going to start taking a more closer look at everybody that's representing me on the ballot. And I'm going to start, you know, I'm going to look, I'm going to, you know, with the Internet, you can do that. You can research them and, and do, you know, research the issues. And I, and, I, and that's one thing that's kind of opened my eyes a little bit more is to really pay more of attention as to what, who is on the ballot. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, research early, vote early. I mean, people can vote early and then they can look at their Department of Elections for their state, find out who's on the ballot a month before, not, you know, the day before. Well, John, good to talk to you today. And, um, and, Take care. It was okay. a pleasure. We appreciate your time, sir. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas.